And uh, Andre, you would like to invite our first speaker? Yeah, uh, I'd like to invite our first speaker uh, who's, uh, from the, my favorite city, Nibro. Uh, Kirill Shevchenko, RubyJS developer at Ruby Garage. Kirill. Hi everyone. Um, I'm happy to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Kirill, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, even uh, driven architecture and. Uh, messaging patterns for uh, Ruby microservices. Uh, and uh, I'll try to share my personal experience uh, with building applications on uh, this way. And then I will talk about common patterns uh, and the related stuff of uh, building uh, microservices uh, and this way. So, also, I'm glad to be the first speaker at the uh, first uh, RubyWine conference. And a uh, few words uh, about me. I'm a full stack developer and uh, technical lead at uh, a company called uh, Ruby Garage. And here I have been working with microservices around uh, two years. Also, I'm a maintainer of uh, Ruby and uh, Rails Digest on Douyoi. And I live in Ypres, Ukraine. When I have some free time, I'm trying to write and uh, share technical posts uh, on Medium. And uh, sometimes I uh, extract and share some nice gems and solutions on GitHub. So, uh, briefly, this talk will be about uh, road from monolith to microservices, uh, communication patterns, uh, message brokers, uh, publish subscribe pattern, and uh, them impl implementation in Ruby, and uh, testing uh, and monitoring. So. And the main idea with which I want to start uh, is, uh, in most cases, you shouldn't start uh, your application from microservices. It's, uh, because this approach um, means uh, you should uh, grow into, not begin with microservices. And uh, now I'll try to describe when you start uh, thinking about this approach. Actually, you should just start your uh, application with uh, something you should actually actually need. It uh, probably can be just a web framework like Rails, Hanami, Sinatra, and so on, and uh, some database storage. It's pretty simple, because uh, you just have one uh, repository. It's uh, easy to maintain deploy, it's uh, easy to invite uh, new people and small projects. Uh, you don't need uh, documentation because uh, you can cover easy hold your application with test and uh, you have a small infrastructure because if you know uh, Heroku uh, or you work with cloud infrastructure, you, you know Docker, Chef, Terraform, and uh, something from that, it's easy to configure and uh, automate deploy. But uh, after some times, when your application starts to solve uh, real problems, you have tasks like uh, email sending, uh, working with external services, you start to, to think about uh, this unique background job processing. It can be sidekick, delay job, or any other tool, and uh, some storage, for example, like Redis. And uh, here our uh, infrastructure get more complex because um, here we should maintain uh, also one um, process for background job. It's uh, 
same peak, which uh, still have the same code base with your monolith. You here you still have one uh, repository, but it's a little bit harder to maintain on uh, your infrastructure side because here comes uh, one more database. We should uh, configure this by yourself or by as a service, and uh, you should add some uh, configuration to monitor also one process, and you should uh, configure your continuous integration to uh, restart uh, also one uh, process. Uh, on the next uh, step, you probably start thinking about cache because your application continues to grow. You have more users, more data, and uh, you start to think about uh, caching your queries, page, and uh, other uh, stuff. And here, our uh, uh, application again uh, get more complex because. Uh, when we deploy our application, we should also load uh, a cache. And uh, here we have more time to release new version of uh, our monolith. And uh, after this step, we look into our business logic side. So, if uh, our application written with uh, domain-driven uh, uh, design, uh, probably if we have some example application like uh, something uh, e-commerce, it uh, can contain orders, uh, products, uh, maybe analytics, and uh, also users to authenticate and authorize them. And, uh, only after this step, when we have monitored with uh, cache, background job processes, and uh, so on, we can start to think about uh, move to microservices. If our application written uh, in uh, DDD way, we can apply uh, this to microservices. We just can imagine our uh, application as uh, some APIs or uh, just application which uh, get uh, data from uh, other part of our app and uh, when we start to apply it uh, we come to first pattern called uh, database per service uh, on this uh, step we should uh, separate uh, our monolith uh, database to many different uh, uh, database, uh, databases for each uh, our domain service. So our orders API, users API, and uh, payments API has uh, their own databases. So uh, they just uh, update, create, and uh, delete data only through APIs. So because we should not uh, do some directly changes from uh, one uh, service database to another service database. Uh, also, we separate our uh, background job processing we can uh, just add um, tools only for part of uh, application which actually uh, needs this. And uh, also here we decompose our parts of uh, jobs uh, storages. So uh, probably one of them will work uh, as uh, last recently used for cache and uh, our databases will be stored a long-term data. So how our application uh, can communicate to each other? Here we meet uh, messaging patterns. 
And uh, here we have two approaches, synchronous and uh, asynchronous. It's two ways. The first way, it's most common. The publisher writes a message and wait until the reader confirms the reading. Uh, probably it uh, can be just a HTTP protocol. And the second way, uh, the reader doesn't wait for the reader. Uh, you can read the message at any time and you send uh, just event or comment from one service to other and uh, can process um, other tasks without uh, waiting for a uh, for response. Uh, first of all, I will talk about uh, the first way because uh, synchronous calls probably easiest to uh, communication pattern to implement uh, simply calls from one service to another. Uh, usually we just use uh, HTTP and uh, REST. Service 1 calls uh, service uh, 2, uh, wait, uh, wait the response, and uh, then finish uh, some task. Here we need uh, HTTP and uh, RPC for synchronous calls, but uh, RPC also provides uh, streaming so it's uh, not only for synchronous calls. Uh, if you continue to talk about HTTP, it's uh, really simple in at game because everybody works with them. We have uh, many infrastructure built on, uh, on top of HTTP. We have a uh, great tooling for testing, expecting, and uh, it's easy to implement because uh, every language has uh, high quality implementation and we have a loose uh, coupling between client and service. But uh, here we have some problems. Uh, you need wait the response. Uh, you need to handle uh, many errors you, uh, because we have many HTTP responses and also we should think about uh, timeouts. Uh, you work with many different APIs uh, as uh, external and uh, internal and you use a lot of uh, different API wrappers uh, in your application. And the uh, last of uh, two problems we uh, solve and we write a gem called uh, Abstract. It's a gem for building uh, API wrappers in Ruby and uh, it provides uh, simple configuration uh, built on top of uh, dry configuration. You just uh, describe uh, each endpoint uh, with uh, you want to work, and uh, it provides two core interfaces: client for describe endpoints and uh, related parameters, and uh, entity. It's kind of uh, ORM and uh, serializer. And uh, when we call uh, some endpoint, we just have a standard, uh, st a standard way for working with uh, many APIs. We can use uh, this uh, approach to building an API wrappers, and we just uh, can use it as uh, one uh, part of services on our domain. Now let's gonna be talk about uh, asynchronous way. And the most uh, popular way to um, implement this is event-driven architecture. And uh, here we have some communication concept, uh, concepts like messages, uh, events, and uh, comments. Uh, messages is just the basic unit of uh, communication in message brokers. It uh, literally uh, can be anything. It can be ID, string, uh, for example, JSON object, comment, uh, event, or whatever. It's just a um, string. And uh, on top of this concept, we can use uh, comments and uh, events. Comments, it's a one to one communication uh, between publisher and uh, subscriber. 
Um, so we have a uh, service one which has uh, sent a comment to one subscriber and uh, it will be processed by uh, only one service. And uh, the next uh, concept is uh, events. Events uh, a little bit uh, more complicated. Uh, it's a message which informs uh, many listeners about something with, um, which has happened. So we have a publisher which uh, notify uh, some uh, subscribers. For example, if we have an online shop, when a uh, user do some changes in the order CPI, for example, he uh, confirmed an order, and uh, we have some uh, other services which uh, subscribe to this type of events, and uh, we can notify other uh, our services like analytics, payments, uh, shipping, and so on. Well, what's happened? Okay. And uh, to better understand this concept, we move to concept of uh, message brokers. It's uh, topics and uh, queues. Topics uh, work with uh, events uh, because all subscribers will receive a copy of the message and here we have um, many uh, subscribers. And the uh, queue, it's a single message will be received by exactly one consumer. So we, uh, in this way we can have uh, many subscribers but uh, comment will be received only by one. Uh, the, bad, uh, the good parts of queues. Um, simple message, uh, it's a simple message in patterns with a transparent communication flow because uh, it's a one to one communication. Uh, messages can be recovered uh, putting uh, them back on the queue. And the bad parts, that only one consumer can get the message. Uh, and uh, it's implied a coupling between uh, producer and com uh, consumer. It's a one-to-one -one relation. So if one service is uh, shut down, uh, our uh, business log the logic uh, um, will not be uh, finished. And topics, uh, it's um, multiple consumers can get the message and it provides uh, decoupling between uh, producer and uh, consumers. It mm, can be realized, published and uh, subscribed patterns on top of uh, topics. Uh, Fonts of topics, uh, it's more complicated than queues and uh, messages uh, can be recorded by a single listener. So if we have uh, one publisher and uh, some pool of uh, listeners and one of them is shut down, we won't be notified about uh, that one of, one of them uh, does not read a uh, message. But uh, we have a solution for that. It's virtual topics. Virtual topics provided by many kind of uh, message brokers like uh, ActiveMQ. It's uh, multiple uh, consumers can get a message. Uh, also, like in topics, we have a decoupling between uh, producer and uh, consumers. Here is a publish uh, subscribe pattern. And the like in queues, messages uh, can be recovered by putting uh, them back on queue. So it means um, under each hour listener, we have a queue. And uh, if uh, some, um, someone from uh, them is uh, shut down, it will be recovered. Uh, but it uh, might require additional configuration in, in broker. And also one concept uh, I uh, want to describe is uh, FIFA queue. 
Uh, so the order um, in which messages are sent and received uh, in strictly preserved. So it means uh, we have a strict uh, position and uh, processing our messages. Now let's talk about uh, message brokers, which uh, pro provide for us uh, topics, uh, queues, messaging brokers. And here we have some checklist for, uh, for them. It should provide uh, service discovery, because uh, in microservices architecture, we have uh, many services and uh, we should have a tooling for networking uh, and uh, adding uh, new services. It should provide uh, messaging. It uh, will be easy to scale. It uh, should provide uh, master slave replication, load balancing, and so on. Uh, logging and uh, queuing. And here we have uh, really many solutions. For example, uh, just uh, five from them, it's uh, Redis, uh, Rapid and Queue, uh, Active and Queue, Kafka, Amazon SQS, and uh, many other services. Um, probably here, uh, Redis uh, doesn't provide a queue, but it provides uh, publish subscribe. And uh, also we can uh, overview here uh, self-hosted uh, solutions and cloud solutions like uh, Amazon SNS. Uh, and uh, SQS. It's fully managed uh, queue on uh, cloud. It's uh, available as a service, so we don't uh, need to spend time to configure them. But uh, FIFO queue support only 300, uh, 300 messages per second, but it can be scaled to 1000 messages and uh, uh, that's still uh, not uh, enough to build a uh, high load product. And uh, no ability to use uh, FIFO queue with publish subscribe button. Um, I'll overview Active Queue as uh, a kind of uh, self hosted brokers. It provides uh, two main concepts uh, of message brokering topics and uh, queues. And uh, it has load balancing, uh, log logging, and uh, provides many protocols. As a bad part, so we should uh, self uh, maintain this or buy as a service, but uh, still we need uh, configuration for uh, enable FIFA queues, uh, virtual topics, uh, and uh, so on. It provides uh, many protocols for uh, build communication on top of services. Uh, ActiveMQ provides his own protocol which is called uh, OpenWire and also support uh, MQTT, XMPP, MQP, Stomp and WebSockets. Probably here are the most common is Stomp and uh, WebSockets. Uh, all of them are uh, scalable and uh, really doesn't have a strong difference uh, if you talk about uh, performance and uh, it's uh, easy to use. Uh, ActiveQ can provide uh, other protocols at the same time, so if you up uh, this as a service or uh, start uh, in a default configuration, it will be work with uh, any of that, and uh, in Ruby we have uh, nice solutions for working with uh, Storm, and uh, I recommend pick uh, this one or uh, WebSocket. Now I uh, try to show some example with uh, building publish subscribe pattern for communication between services. 
called the uh, publish subscribe and uh, I'll show uh, them with example uh, of uh, Reddit because it's the uh, easiest way to illustrate this. So we have uh, some uh, comment. We can uh, imagine this uh, like uh, cache object which will be uh, converted to JSON and published in some queue uh, in some channel. And uh, here we can uh, handle the result of receiving. And uh, we should uh, handle the uh, result of uh, execution. So if uh, here Redis return zero, it uh, means uh, we have zero subscribers and uh, anybody and nobody receive a message. For, uh, from subscriber side, it's a little bit uh, complicated, so we call uh, method subscribe for some channel, and here we have uh, problems because uh, we should uh, process some uh, messages and comments at the same time, and here we will start to use uh, thread, and here we should be careful. Because uh, uh, each our business uh, logic services should be called in uh, um, inside uh, thread. Because uh, if we initialize them under or off thread, it will uh, share instances of variables, and uh, we will receive um, many kinds of problems. And uh, we sh uh, we should uh, rescue errors uh, to avoid uh, stop our uh, subscribe. Uh, now uh, I'll talk about testing and uh, here we have uh, many questions because uh, nobody really knows how to test microservices and uh, no one really knows uh, how to test infrastructure for microservices. But uh, here we can talk about uh, blue green uh, deployment and uh, so on. And uh, we should uh, write unit testing for each services uh, with hard mocking. And uh, for uh, writing international uh, testing, we should up uh, the service, the server with uh, our, our services. And uh, we can follow this uh, way for a smaller uh, size uh, infrastructure, for example, uh, under uh, 10 services. And uh, the last but not least, it's monitoring. Uh, no more single system, no more uh, centralized monitoring. And uh, we should uh, write logs and metrics uh, for each our uh, server and uh, collect them. Here we need uh, bits, uh, stat D, and the elastic search for storage. Uh, we should uh, aggregate uh, our logs, so it uh, should contain the same uh, patterns. Probably here we can pick a log stash. And we need visualization for uh, our logs and metrics. Here can be Kibana, Grafana, and uh, any other dashboard. And uh, the main problem is that we should store and maintain all of this data and uh, systems. So we need a strong DevOps culture and. Uh, here I am uh, not trying to sell you on this uh, idea to rewrite anything or to microservices and uh, you should be careful, careful with uh, this approach. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, So now we will have a Q&A session. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask Kirill. Raise your hands, please. And you get the chocolate, the little one. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Anyone? No questions? Okay. How many microservices do you have in your stores? Um, in your application? Uh, currently, in my project, it's uh, under two services. It's uh, mm, three, uh, three Rails APIs, one uh, application for writing analytics to external services like uh, Segment, uh, Mix Panel, and kind of that. Uh, and uh, if we talk about uh, front end, it's also separate application which uh, talk with uh, our APIs. And uh, we have uh, around three services which doesn't provide an ex external API, it just is an event from our Rails API. It's under it's other services. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, you have mentioned that we don't know how to test infrastructure for our microservices. So, could you tell us about your ideas? Do you just Probably somehow you, test uh, I get your question. So, uh, if you have a, some um, tools like Terraform, uh, probably it's uh, simple to test. But if you just uh, configure each your service uh, manu manually on uh, cloud, it uh, should uh, contain documentation and it's hard to maintain. So I recommend to use tools like uh, Terraform or CloudFormation if we can talk about Amazon. One clarification. Uh, about the infrastructure, if we have scale infrastructure, do we have some possibilities to test our increase or decrease possibilities? How do we approach it? Mm. You talk about performance? Uh, not like performance, but uh, with small data and uh, logs. Uh, this scale environment on uh, clouds, when we have not one instance of our microservices, but two, then three, four, five, and so on. So how to test how uh, it's always easy to test one instance, but if there are several of them. Uh, okay, you talk about uh, probably a typical way of uh, load balancing. It's uh, horizontal scale, uh, scaling, yeah? And uh, probably, personally, I uh, doesn't meet this problem, so here I can't uh, recommend anything. Okay. Anyone else? Questions? What, 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 what? Oh. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kirill, for your presentation. I have a uh, uh, question related to architecture. For example, what is the uh, most value uh, lesson learned uh, you can uh, provide now uh, when we are switching from monolith application to microservice application? Uh, thank you for your question, and uh, I can say that uh, you should actually think about your business problem. So if you need probably the same uh, uh, logic for different kind of application, you can start to switch for them. But uh, here you need uh, many problems uh, related to uh, DevOps culture. You should uh, maintain, separate uh, so many applications. But uh, here, with uh, microservices, um, you feel free to use uh, different technologies. And uh, it's easier to share tasks uh, between your uh, developers team. And it's easier to integrate new developers to new services. Thank you very much.